Elsia, my name is Elsia, Elsia, Elsia. The other sounds that you hear in that from me. So tiki, so tiki, said the other sounds that you hear in that from So tiki, so tiki, we are a cute and play So let's get this how to plan amazing weddings for the next normal event started um, right now. The topic that we are going to do is marketing, emotional intelligence, avoiding COVID-19 lawsuits, how to do proposals and contracts. This is a monumental panel that will help you legalize your event and keep you safe at the same time it is healthy uh, what you are doing so i believe you are the health and vitality of the event rob is the legalese of the event <laughs> and we make the world go round out of everything give yourself grace because we all have you know gone through something that is not our normal not our regular you know and 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 also, you know, with the pandemic, we were the first industry, I say, to get shut down, right? You know, events stopped right away. You know, clients stopped right away. So give ourselves enough grace to, to feel, to feel that, you know, this is a real emotion. This is real. This is a normal emotion for us to um, feel sad or feel upset or feel even angry. During the pandemic, what I did was that I started something called the Wedding Influence Mastermind. And this is, it happened for, uh, on a monthly basis. And basically we find some of the top wedding pros from around the world to be on this panel. And we discuss different challenges that people have. It's almost like Clubhouse where we pull people onto the stage and then we address their challenges. And we get to pull from the collective intelligence of all these amazing wedding pros and literally solve some big challenges that we are currently having, uh, especially during the pandemic. The, the risks surrounding COVID are a few. The primary, uh, the primary liabilities that a wedding or prof an event professional is going to have is either being sued by a event attendee, a guest, or an employee. So um, I would say in this age, that's going to be the number one cause of concern. So it, let me just say this though, before everybody kind of gets super worried, is that. In order to be successful, if somebody is sick with COVID, goes to the hospital and they want to they want to sue you because you put the event on as the planner or as the venue operator or whatever the case is, just because someone got COVID at an event does not mean that you are liable. There has to be a showing that you as the professional were negligent in some way in most jurisdictions. And so, in other words, did you do something that was unreasonable that led to somebody at that event getting COVID? Um, and if you, if there's evidence that supports that, then you could be liable. If there's no evidence to support that, then you're probably not liable. So the best, the best thing to do is to be compliant with whatever the standard of care is. And typically the standard of care in this situation is going to be whatever the um, infectious disease protocols are for your jurisdiction, which is typically going to be the CDC or whatever your department of community health is in your state. So doing the best you can to have yourself and any of your employees or contractors abide by that standard of care is going to do you probably very good in shielding yourself from those lawsuits. Well, marketing is so important, right? A lot of times small businesses, especially in the wedding industry, when they first started, they you know built their foundations up 
and then they found, you know, they find that they don't have enough clients. So next thing they do is that they do some marketing, no matter if it's like Instagram ads or posting more on Instagram, stuff like that. And then they see like, oh my gosh, there's an influx of clients coming in, which is a great thing. So they start working on those clients. Now, as soon as they're done those clients, they're like, oh my gosh, I have no more clients coming in. Now I got to struggle and it takes time to market, right? You, you want to build that momentum and keep that momentum higher and higher and higher as you get more and more clients. Now you might think that you'll be too busy, but you can always say no to certain clients and slowly upscale the kind of clientele you want to take on and really niche. And I think niching is, is really important. So keeping up that momentum and consistency is so important when it comes to marketing. Don't do it when you need to do it because by the time you need to do it, it takes time to drive up that momentum and you're not going to get clients just like that. Uh, it, it takes a little bit of time. <laughs> um, I think for, for myself, you know, um, focusing in on that one thing can be challenging when you do so much already. So having someone like Alex or someone that is focused in marketing um, really helps you to um, determine what is your plan and develop and, and actually moving forward with executing that marketing plan. So typically, if your marketing is is truthful and and you know compliant with whatever laws you have, like you're not stealing people's photos or doing stuff like that, then you should be okay. If I knew everything about marketing, I'd be on my own, you know, my space station or my yacht. <laughs> and, and I will add this part to um, Queen is you know for us as someone that's in the therapeutic space as well, we do have to be careful on what we what type of support we do provide online. Right. So like on Clubhouse, for example, I get a lot of people who want um, us to provide therapy while on Clubhouse. So I make sure that in my bio that we state that we do not provide therapy um, for you, but we are able to lean, um, direct you to um, professionals who can support you in what it, whatever it is that you need to support. In. If it's a brand new business, it's a very different strategy where you focus mostly on the foundation like your website and, and things like, you know, generating more followers on Instagram and stuff like that. Whereas when you're more of a medium business, we could look at the health of your uh, visibility on Google, but we can also look at different, um, different things like Instagram ads or Google ads and stuff like that. It really, really depends. Also, if you are a newer business, the niching is probably where you want to focus on first because once you find your niche or your ideal client, that's where you build everything around it, like your foundations and the type of advertisements that you would do. So really setting a strong foundation first and then doing everything else would probably be the key. I mean, there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of different ways to market yourself. And a lot of times you're just drowned with all this information, but most of it doesn't apply to you. You really want to focus on what works for you and maybe try a little bit, little things here and there to see what sticks and what works and whatnot. But again, the foundation is really the key and finding that niche, that message for your business is, is definitely where you should start with. If I'm the attorney representing the person that was sick with COVID, I'm going to name everybody that I think I can get some money from. But like I said, it's going to always come down to whether or not the individual defendant in that case, whether it's the venue operator, the planner, the DJ that was, you know, getting the party hype, whoever it is, they would have had to have done something to have breached what we call the standard of care, meaning what would a reasonable DJ do, a reasonable planner? It, it probably wouldn't be coming to the event if you had a fever or you haven't been able to taste anything for three days. Or if you uh, or your or your people were doing that, or if you you know took the train and were licking the poles, you know what I mean. So like, not taking care as you were as you as you need to be, unless that individual who is sick and is suing you or they or suing the defendants has evidence that you breached that standard of care. We don't even get to the next part, which is that breach of standard of care actually has to have caused you to have gotten COVID. And I mean I'm. We'll see how these cases bear out, but I think that's going to be a very difficult proposition for a lot of people to be, well, you 
having COVID or you giving you not taking care actually caused me to get COVID when I could just say, well, you went to the grocery store the day before. Or how could did you not get COVID when you went to the grocery store? Well, how, how do you know that it's me? Because it's not like, you know, this is the, the COVID is is specific to you and we can figure that out, at least not the science that we have right now. So um, that's 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 what we're looking out for. So anybody can be um, a defendant in that case. There are a couple of things that you can do very quickly. Um, one thing, like I said, is to do the best you can to take reasonable actions to prevent and spread of infection. The other thing is contract clauses, which limits your liability in those situations. You, it can be called indemnity, hold harmless, these type of things, which basically says, client, you're assuming the risk of coming to this thing because it's in public and it's multiple people. Um, and you are going to hold me harmless or indemnify me if another guest or whoever wants to sue me or tack me on as a defendant because somebody got COVID. 10 seconds. The only, yeah. way that, the only way that you're protecting your material is going to be either having the client pay you for, for that, for their silence with a non-disclosure agreement or some other type of exchange of, of well, money yeah. for the process. Absolutely. Okay. I think that does it. Algie, I see something in your eyeballs. Go. Yeah. So uh, one question that I always get is, you know, if I put all my services and everything I do on my website, including my prices, all of these wedding pros will just copy exactly what I do and provide the same service. Now, this is not true. And a lot of times I have this conversation, the way that you provide and execute your services is really unique to yourself and your brand and how you execute. I think execution is so important. And the way that you do it is, is, is going to make you different. So you don't have to worry too much about what other people do or what they're charging. I mean, just do what you do great and, you know, make sure your pricing is good for your specific clientele and go from there. Absolutely. I agree with everybody. Perfect. <laughs> Robert Schneck, Teresa Sawyer, Sawyer, Alex Chang, thank you so much for being a part of our panel today. We will see you throughout the ex.
down and just dive right in and follow my lead. Well, I found a boy, beautiful and sweet. Oh, I never knew you were someone waiting for me. We were just kids when we fell in love Not knowing what it was I will not give you up this time Darling, just kiss me slow Your heart's all I own And in your eyes, your own wedding market. So small weddings, big market. That is what I like to say. I think that we are in a shift in the wedding industry right now. What the heck is the small wedding market? Reasons why couples would choose to elope because as I said, this is pre-2020. So I want to give you information on that and how you can use this in your business because what good is this chat if I am not helping you achieve your goals in your business and helping you understand the wedding market that you may not have really paid attention to before. And the small wedding market is any offering that you as any type of wedding pro, any package or service that you have that is geared towards those, whether that's couple only or any sort of wedding that is 30 guests or under, that's a small wedding market. That's what I mean when I say that. So there's a lot of new terminology that has come up within the past year and also previously in the past about six years in the wedding market talking about small weddings and different offerings. There are popular buzzwords and I think it's great to understand what is going on in our wedding industry so that you can best serve your market that way. So. Small weddings are not just on the rise because of the pandemic. Small weddings were booming long before 2020. In fact, I started doing my small wedding offerings in 2014. 
And I have since found that many in the industry were starting to do elopement weddings, pop-up weddings around 2014. This was a time where our couples were starting to ask us for alternative wedding formats. We were starting to get inquiries that were very, very driven by couples who wanted smaller weddings. And so we needed to figure out solutions for those couples. And I'm going to tell you the top reasons why we were seeing this, because I think it's important to note that this, the small wedding market, is a fast growing part of our wedding industry. And that means that you should know why the couples are choosing to do smaller weddings that have absolutely nothing to do with the needs of 2020. So let's dive into that. This, I will also say, is from the past six years of doing research and speaking with our couples and other couples who are wanting to elope. So this isn't just speculation. This is absolutely understanding that we are listening to our couples and this is what they're saying. Okay, I always start my day off with affirmations and we're going to talk about that real quickly as well. So I started off with this particular affirmation and sometimes I change it up a little bit. And this says I am capable of indescribable success and I know my worth. And so I ask you all right now to repeat that I am capable of, of indescribable success and I know my worth. Knowing your worth is a part of your emotional intelligence and it is so important as you navigate through this industry and you work with others who are in this industry, whether that be your clients or whether it be your vendors, you want to make sure that you understand your own emotions and you know your worth as you are building these relationships, okay? So what is event therapy? The event therapy is a service that promotes healthy minds for event and entertainment professionals. We really base off of three main pillars. So our first one is mental health and physical health. Two is business wellness and financial security. And three is social networking and, and relationship building. All three of those are so important and are key to our success in this business, as well as our per our personal development. I'm getting tongue tied. Um, and I put these last two: the business and business wellness and financial security, as well as social networking and relationship building, because those directly impact our mental health and our physical health in this industry. So what are some components of emotional intelligence? So here we will talk about perceived emotions. So your perceived emotions are awareness of nonverbal cues and emotions of others. OK, those nonverbal cues are the facial expressions that you might see in others, how they interact, how they move their bodies. All of that. Those are perceived emotions that you make you know, that you may run into. But you also have to think about what are the perceived emotions that others are gathering from you? How are you presenting yourself? What are your facial expressions, Um, you know, about how are your eyebrows moving? How are you moving? How are you coming about um, um, when you're interacting with others? The other is reasoning with your emotions or reasoning with the emotions that you are um, interpreting from others. So what is fighting for my attention? You want to prioritize versus react. So if I am feeling upset in a moment, let me let me determine how I'm going to interact with others or how I'm going to interact with this particular project opposed to um, how I'm going to react to it. So you want to prioritize um, your emotions and you want to make sure that just is generally about this is generally about how you respond to the emotions of others or to your own emotions. OK, thirdly is understanding emotions. So understanding emotions how and what emotions are expressed may be triggered by different factors. In other words, it may not be about you. It may not be about you that that particular person that is interacting with you in that moment seem to be short with you or seem to be a little upset, it seems. You know, these are the emotions that it seems, but we don't know what it's triggered by. There are so many environmental factors that go on. Prime example, we just talked about COVID-19. 
there's so many of us who are stripped away from our events or stripped away from um, financial security that we may have a, a feeling that, you know, is coming out as negative to others who are, you know, in our circle, who are be, who are experiencing us in that moment. So it may not be because of you. It may be because of environmental factors or other things that may be going on. Fourth component of emotional intelligence is managing your emotions. How am I responding to my own emotions and others? When you are in a place where you understand your emotional intelligence or your EQ, then you are more self aware of how you are coming across to others, but in, even more importantly, I should say, how you are coming across to yourself. We're going to talk about that in another session, but I definitely want to make sure that I talk to people about self-awareness and how we come across to ourselves, okay? Because Google is measuring more and more about the user experience, how people are using a website. So when they land on your website, do they push back? How long do they stay? What pages do they visit? If maybe they might not be visiting anything, they might just push back and leave your website. All of that is measured in Google's algorithm and actually put into how they, the factors of how they rank your website. So the more valuable, good behaviors people are um, doing or behave when they're on your website, the better it is for your SEO. This is a website that I built. This uh, was built last year in February, so a little bit over a year ago. Before I built this website, it was on WordPress, and they were actually doing not too bad. They were ranking for 16 keywords on the first page of Google, so a lot of them were not relevant. I would say maybe five to six of them were relevant, like um, wedding dresses in the Reading Bridal District, which is the biggest bridal district in the world. Um, well, in North America, potentially the world. And so there are a few really valuable keywords that they want to rank higher on and also to get more keywords onto the first page of Google. So when we redid her website, we experienced a 300% increase in traffic and bookings. Now let's walk over to the user experience. As we can see, if I scroll, this video actually gets darker and this navigation uh, tucks into the top right. Now, if I scroll back up, it, the video gets brighter and the navigation actually comes back out. Now, this is really great because the navigation is always here. There are some very valuable assets here like the Book Now button. The Book Now button is amazing because if I'm at any point in, interested in booking a time with them, this leads to their dynamic calendar. So only times that are available would be listed here. So if I just want to book a time with them, I can literally book here without leaving the website and continue viewing the website afterwards. So let's say I'm you know, looking at gowns by price, and my budget is, I don't know, $1,500 to $2,000. I can find all of these beautiful gowns here. And if I see something I like, for example, this beautiful, beautiful sincerity dress here, I can either book now here or I can book now here. So extremely easy. Uh, there's a lot of SEO that we've um, put into the website and it's really paid off because after that, we're doing their monthly SEO um, updates on a monthly basis and we're also designing her second website as we speak. So this is an um, amazing, amazing website with great results, such a success story that I wanted to share with you guys. And as you guys can see, they can feature whatever dress they want, whenever they want, and also whenever they have a new uh, testimonial, this will get featured here. So there's a lot of dynamic stuff happening here. And if I were to look at, I don't know, wedding dresses by designer, for example, I would see all the wedding dresses by designer. These are the call to actions that I will always see. Whenever they update on Instagram, this will update automatically. So really a success story. And I just wanted to show you this uh, so that we can kind of go into more of the details. If we just go into the details without showing you that, it would be very hard to 
uh, describe. And if you're wondering what the purpose of today's session is, ultimately, there's a couple things. Number one, your wedding industry revenue has taken a hit due to the pandemic, and I want to help you recover that today with an easy-to-earn, supportive additional stream of income. Number two, the couples that you're helping to get married, they're struggling. They're facing challenges in their relationship that they aren't used to facing. Everything's in the pressure cooker. And number three, marriage preparation is such an important art. That's a bit of a dying art. So we're going to revamp that today and make marriage preparation classes accessible to your bridal couples, ideally accessible through you because you can become their teacher. And if you're wondering if the techniques work, I'll just share with you two quick testimonials. This is from a couple that had actually gone through, they were already married, they were in need of renewing their vows, and they had gone through 10 years of turmoil and an eight-year affair. They said, after just two intense sessions, we not only began reconnecting on a deeper level, we started making love again. I can truly say we have never been happier or more in love. Haley's methods are unique to any other marriage counselor, and she is the first person that was helpful for our marriage and each of us individually. This is not therapy, it is better. Tracy says, Haley was very informative and gave us the tools to learn how to communicate better. This is a couple that was living together and not yet married, but they were planning for their future. She says, she's given us hope for our future together. Her techniques she uses in her session really make sense to my partner and I. We are going to apply and use her techniques to better improve our relations together. We will definitely use her service in the future and recommend her to our friends and family. So here we go, my friends. Let's talk about how you can get certified as a marriage mentor. Nothing's more beautiful than a bridal couple in love on their big, beautiful wedding day. But actually, something is more beautiful than that. And that is the big, beautiful life that they're hopefully going to go on and live together. Living out their dreams as a couple goes so much further than the wedding day. And you can help. Have you always wanted to help couples experience more love, more connection, and a healthier foundation for actually building a lasting relationship? Does it tug on your heart when your bridal couples are struggling through their event planning and you see conflicts arise that you wish you could support, but you don't have the training to support them with? If you've ever dreamed of making an even bigger difference in the lives of the couples that you work with, you, my friend, are in the right place. In 2019, I decided it was time to share my proven one-of-a-kind process with other professionals so that together we could serve more wonderful couples, teaching them how to have healthy, happy, and lasting relationships. These are the same methods that I've been teaching for over two decades and just in the last two years, making them available to you as a distinguished wedding professional. I've created a five-step process, which I'm going to show you today, for achieving an extraordinary relationship. Now, if you're in a relationship, you can apply these same techniques for you and your partner on the home front, but you can also share them with your bridal couples. I've created the ideal love method, the six secret skills of happy couples, and we're going to learn exactly what those things are today. Getting certified as a marriage mentor could be this perfect solution for you if you're a heart-centered professional service provider and you already work with couples, but you dream of serving them in a deeper way and taking them beyond just the wedding day. Let's go over quickly what the ideal love method is. In the first step, couples take inventory of nearly 20 areas that make up a great marriage. So we are going to have some fun today and we're going to be talking all about marketing. Marketing in today's world. What is your marketing saying? So first off, we're going to start with the ROI, which means return on investment. And every business owner should have a clear understanding of what this can do. And it's for me, the ROI is really important because you want to figure out where your budget is going, where that investment is, and where it's coming back. It's a way of measuring the return on an investment from the amount a company spends on that marketing. So marketing ROI, some of the benefits are that they justify the marketing spend that shows what to, which shows you what you will spend on. And it also compares to marketing efficiencies with the competitors. So this is a really great time for you to go back and forth to figure things out. <laughs> the last thing that I'm going to do is check it off the list. Um, with branding or marketing, you need to ask yourself these quick little things. Ask yourself some of these questions before getting your name out there. Who is your target audience and what is the message that you want them to hear? Does by brand identity relate 
or does it leave them asking questions? You know, will they understand it? Does your brand share the uniqueness of what you're going to offer and why it's important and why you want them to buy? Does the brand have value? Does it show who you are and will it attract the right clientele? And lastly, off that checklist and super important is, does the brand reflect the values that you want to represent? And I said that earlier, but it's really important because it really is based off of your reputation. My name is Elle. My name is Siddiqui. Stay in touch, acuteinflections.com. Visit our, our booth, please. And um, look out for that album. May 11th. May 11th.